Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Mindcastle podcast. And I'm actually looking at you right now because we're doing the first one on video. So we're now on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So if you're listening to this, we're on YouTube, which honestly, if I'm being real, you know, listening to the podcast is probably easier, but there are different times throughout this podcast in the past and, and in future episodes where we'll like reference something or hold it up or, Hey, look at this thing. So you can always go to the YouTube channel and check that out and hit subscribe and like, and all that stuff. So Today's episode, um, we did one recently on this concept of the mosaic of knowledge. Mm. Um, just a really 30 second recap. It's just this concept of if you look at a piece of a mosaic, it doesn't make any sense or like right. there's just individual blocks, you know? Yeah. But when you step back and look at the whole thing and say, mm-hmm. oh, this is clear. I see what what's happening here. I like to think of our worldviews and our frameworks in the same sense. No, nobody has a complete picture of the world and the human experience and how right. it works. So in that episode, um, we had talked about reading widely, ingesting lots of information. Tons like, of information. Yeah. Like, I mean, not, not excessively, but you know, cause there's a proverb about that in the Bible, you know, the reading of endless books is, you know, useless or something like that. So, I mean, there, <laughs> there's obvious limits you have to apply the knowledge, but the more you can build out that framework of the world and how it works and satisfy some of that curiosity, I think mm-hmm. is, is, is a really healthy thing. Yeah. Um, which actually we had said maybe another episode on, um, the growth mindset, yes. which really applies. To I this. really want to do that one sometime. So for this podcast, as a bit of a smorgasbord sampler, we're going to dive into uh, just a couple of the odds and ends we've poked around with in the last little bit, Mm -hmm. just to give you kind of a reference of what I mean by sampling these pieces of knowledge. Yeah. Um, So do you want to start or or, uh, or should I start? start. Uh, What what you got for the last, like, let's just go back last few months. Like, what have you been reading? What what things are you really curious about? mm -hmm. What, you know, uh, documentaries, anything. It doesn't have to be just books. It's like mainly books, but like things were just like, you know, kind of exploring. Yeah. Like right now I'm, I'm really in the rabbit hole of the whole, uh, work from home thing versus work from the <laughs> office thing, which is a big deal because of in my industry, you know, that I work in. Yeah. Um, and the science is actually starting to really come out on that and be like, we got it all wrong. And COVID oh, really, yeah, COVID really messed us up. And actually the work from home thing is not really good for us. Yeah. Um, so there's people that disagree. So I'm kind of deep in it. So, so yeah, that's, that's not a book. That's like, so that's articles. just like, yeah. First of all, let's just say, I'm really tired right now. So just give me this first episode to wake up, okay? Because I didn't really sleep much last night because I was traveling. I drank an espresso already. Okay. Um, right. I was it traveling was- and we got stuck in traffic. Really bad accident. So like we didn't get home till really late. It wasn't my fault. It was, you know, anyway. So give me a minute here. There's a few of the things I've been diving into. Uh, one is ego. Been really interested in ego and how ego affects Ooh. our life. And so I... I've been reading some of the the main book that I consumed about that was Ego is the Enemy by um, Eric. No, 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 no. Uh, Ryan, Ryan, Holiday. Ryan Holiday. Yeah, yeah. So that's good. Um, I first became interested in it in I was just sitting sitting by the beach <laughs> in the Dominican Republic, and uh, I was just sitting there thinking, and I was like thinking about stuff. I was like, you know, just like kind of letting my mind wander and just go all over the place, and it kind of like hit me. I was like, you know, ego is like a really big part of our lives. And it affects a lot of us. Like we hear about it, right? Like a lot of different things by ego. And I was like, I don't really know what ego is. Like, a, like if I had to define it, I could get close, but I don't really know. Like, okay, that's ego. That's not. This is a good use of ego. This is wait. Is there a good use of ego? Is it only bad? Is it like you know something that's good or something that's good if we use it for good, bad if we use it for bad? Like, how does all of this work? I was like, okay, if this is a big enough, like if this is a big deal, like if we all have this. I want to know about it. I want to know what it is. I want to know how it works. I want to know how it's affecting my life. So I was like, okay, I'm going to hit this up with uh, like digesting knowledge on it. So I finished the book that I was reading before that, which I forget what it was. It was, oh, it was the first part of Ryan Holiday's series. Probably The Obstacle is the, the Way. The Obstacle is the Way, say. yeah. And then so, his second one was Ego is the Enemy. Should we quickly explain who Ryan Holiday is? Uh, yeah. So Ryan Holiday is a... Um, <laughs> Man, how do you even describe him? Well, he he has a thing called the Daily Stoic. Um, so he he's really into Stoicism. Yeah, the that's kind of where philosophy. he first. He kind of starts there, but he no. he goes a lot of other. I don't know. It's it's in, that's what made him famous, I guess you could say. In the um, yeah, in the in the in like the production eye, I guess. But like the business world, he was really really huge for a very long time, and it's only that, yeah, it's like from true. his twenties to thirty five, twenty to thirty five range, he was incredibly successful and popular in the business world of startups and investing and all that stuff. 
And and then in the last like little bit, he's like throttled way back and it's like, okay, that's actually not super important, right? So like stoicism, let's dive into what's most important here, family and like happiness and well-being and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's when he started writing books and doing um, blogs and stuff like that. Um, and became very, very successful with that too. Because he, he really <laughs> dialed in on the stoicism thing, yeah. which is actually where I kind of divert from him a little bit because <laughs> stoicism I find to be to be kind of abhorrent in my mm-hmm. personal opinion. Yeah. But I, I know it helps some people and stuff, but mm-hmm. whew, it's kind of kind of bleak it's actually, not, not, almost nihilistic or something. So yeah. some of his stuff's a little bit odd, but it, I, I found the series you're referring to, what is it? Obstacles Away, Ego is the Enemy, and I forget the last one. There's short little reads. There's some good stuff in there. You know, definitely yeah. disagree with some of the underlying philosophy <laughs> in a, a, few, yeah. a few points. It's a little hustle culture-y. The, the ego is the enemy one, though, is, was really got That me. one was good. The, this whole yeah. concept of ego and how we think about ourselves and, and stuff. is yeah. yeah. So that's a little bit about Ryan Holiday. And so I was like, okay, ego is the enemy. <laughs> ego seems like a good place to start. So I dove into that. And ego is, uh, is interesting because it's kind of a new-ish concept, I guess. Like... Hmm. You have Freud and all of his stuff about ego, and it's like, Bleh, okay, dude, Freud <laughs> let's is not dive into that wacko. section. Um, Newsflash, just quick side note: okay. talking about Freud, Sigmund Freud. I was in Vienna, Austria, two years ago. Okay, and they have the Freudian Cafe. I was like, what? Look it up, and it's like the cafe he would go to for lunch or coffee every day. For his, <laughs> it was like right across from university. I'm like. Oh my goodness. Hold my espresso. We wow. are totally going to go there and get lunch there. And it's gorgeous. It's a super old, fabulous. And they got like Freud, you know, signs hanging up and stuff. <laughs> it was kind of weird to be That's like, he, interesting. <laughs> he legit, the chances that he sat in the same booth we're in right now, because everything's still all original. Yeah. Is actually really high because he went to this place over the many years, Whoa. and it was like th- that was just kind of weird because Freud crazy. is one of those guys that we look now. Science is looking at his work and be like, yeah, he was kind of kind of off his nut, um, but yeah. he really radically <laughs> radically influenced how people in the last century thought about mm-hmm. the human experience, and a lot of it's pretty whacked out. But anyways, yeah. not to get way off <laughs> in the weeds on Freud, I just that just kind of blew my mind. We literally yeah, like yeah. stumbled on it on the street, and we're like, oh, "That's crazy. what is this Freudian cafe? We got to check this out. It's <laughs> huge. I'll take you there sometime. It's, That'd be it's, cool. It's yeah. totally worth it. It's right across yeah. from the university. Generally, outliers of society, especially in science and psychology, are either geniuses or completely crazy. He was kind of both, right? Because there's no doubt he was smart, but he was also kind of nuts in the head. Right? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, you know what? We're not. We're he not got a, psychologists. A few so, of yeah. his. He got a few of his like core beliefs and foundational things a little bit off, and so it like in the long run. But yeah, some of his stuff, if you take it very linearly, it's actually pretty decent. But okay. if you look at what he's building it on, it's like, whoo we anyway. <laughs> like, um, well, slow down, professor. <laughs> where are you going? <laughs> so anyway, I've been I've been diving into that and finding it very, very fascinating. Um and still not entirely sure where I I still have a lot to learn about it. And I it's hard to know how to research it, I guess is how I'm saying or what mm-hmm. I'm saying. So figuring that out's been really fun. Um so that's one kind of section that I've been getting into. The other section is reading amazing little like uh story type books um okay so like my little prince interesting amazing book absolutely fascinating and amazingly good um and like the um the boy the mole the horse and the fox it's a great book as well um so those two specifically but specifically like my little prince was just so so good it's like this I don't even know if it's like an allegory or illustration of life. So if you get a chance to read that one, it's it's kind of like a it's like a kid's book, but it's like has some really deep knowledge and wisdom in it. It's Ooh, it's pretty okay. neat because it kind of looks at it through the lens of this of this child's eyes of like adults. And, you know, it's like this businessman, he's like working and like doing this and I gotta count this, I gotta have all the math petitions and like gotta get all the numbers right. And he's like why <laughs> he's like what to make sure that they're right why like i have to count them make sure they're right well why do you have to count them because then if i have enough then i can i can do this over here and get more numbers and he's like why do you need more numbers what do you do with these numbers i just try to accumulate more of them <laughs> why <laughs> and it's like That's you just really see good. it from this kid and then he goes through these different people and and different things and all this stuff and you just kind of see it from a kid's perspective and you're like okay like i you know 
the kind of thrust of the book is like avoiding the whole grown up mindset, I guess, mm-hmm. of like, oh, this is the way life is. I got life figured out and all this and just kind of approaching it mm-hmm. from a kid's perspective. Anyway, I'm getting off on a bunny trail. So those are kind of the two avenues that I'm kind of um, diving into at this point. Just One, I'm just really enjoying just for fun. And the other one is kind of more serious. Like, okay, what is ego and how do we live with that and like use it and work through it? Mm-hmm. So yeah, also diving into shame a little bit. Um, looking at the Ooh. impacts of shame on our life. That's been really interesting. Have you have you ran into Brene Brown's work on shame? Mm-hmm. You should. Yeah, it's, really she's got she's got some she's uh, kind of a shame guilt mm. that area uh, of research. Um she started it way back before it was, you know, like cool mm-hmm. or accepted and she wrote some books on it that are nice. they're all like New York Times bestseller. She's written a c- good number of books. Wow. I just started reading her stuff. Now, I hesitate to like wholeheartedly recommend someone like that cuz yeah. some of the language she uses is is pretty it's um vo- almost vulgar or something, yeah. you know, like sometimes she would claim I think Christianity and stuff, but um yeah, really helpful for mm. for me and it's helped mm. a lot of people. I actually had I don't know, probably like 10 friends say, you need to read this stuff. And then actually uh, one of our mutual friends said, here, here's a copy. Please read this. It is that good. <laughs> nice. And I did. And it was that good. So um, Nice. That's really cool. Yeah, I got started. I got started on the whole shame thing because I read a book. Um, and it's by a pretty well-known author in the secular world. Um, I'm not going to mention it just because there is some stuff in it, actually quite a bit of stuff that I that would be okay for some of our audience, but for other parts of our audience, I don't think it would be terribly appropriate. It's, Just a bit much. Yeah. Yeah. It's, mm-hmm. it's very intense. Um, and it's his whole journey. It's his whole journey through like healing his past. And it's, he's completely, completely follows a, a secular perspective on this. And so like any and every kind of like, um, medication or like anything to subdue and like tame his shame and things like that. He does. And so you see him go from like, he tries counseling and he tries like, I'm going to work through this, figure it out. And then he's like, that didn't work. So he takes like the next two years and just does anything he wants, like anything and goes completely like way out there, like, like super far, just trying to like, see if he can figure like, like live with his shame and and figure it all out on his own. Okay. Quick, quick question. So was he having the approach um, from that? Again, ancient Greek philosophy of what is it? Hed- hedonism, right? Where is the it pursuit of pleasure at all at all expense? Or was he saying, no, this is a way of dealing no. with shame? Well, see, he Not didn't as... know it. The thing is, he didn't know it was shame wow. until a little bit later. So, that's so dark. he's just like, oh, I have this problem. And like, I'm trying to get through it. It's not working. Okay, I'm just going to like <laughs> try all anything I want and see if I can like feed it enough and just tame it and live with it. And that didn't work. And so then he comes back around which is it's just a freaky book. It's like 20 hours long. And he oh, you, doesn't you listen to yeah, oh, okay. He doesn't come around until the last like chapter. And so Ooh. you're like getting right up to the end and you're like, uh <laughs> where is <laughs> he gonna end this? Because yeah. this is like this is some crazy stuff. And anyway, the end of it, it like it really talks about like his impact of shame on his life as a child and how that affected him in his older years. Mm-hmm. And like it really like I was like, whoa, like that's, that's some crazy powerful stuff. So that kickstarted the whole process of shame and looking into that too. Cause I was like, this is a huge part of everyone's life. Like we oh, yeah. have to know how to deal with oh, this. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Wow. I'm done. That's so, long, long so ramble. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's fascinating stuff though. Cause it, it's, it's because it's shame. We don't like to think and talk about these things mm-hmm. very much because it's, yeah. uh, you know, hello, shame. shame. I mean, you, you know what <laughs> I mean? Like, it's just like, oh, that doesn't feel nice. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, and just learning to be honest with ourselves and what we've yeah. felt and what we're experiencing things, yeah. uh, you know, is, is actually, you, you know, it goes back to that. Um, oh boy, is it Aristotle or Socrates? Now I'm questioning myself. I believe it's Socrates. Know thyself and you shall know um, the mysteries of the universe and the gods. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he basically yeah. getting to that of like saying, if, if you can understand yourself and be very honest with yourself and like, this mm-hmm. is what I'm feeling, this is who I am. Um, suddenly there's so much clarity on life in general, just yeah. every, everything. It yeah. suddenly was like, Oh, okay. Cause I know, like I, I start understanding myself um, yeah. or I'm honest with myself. Actually being honest with yourself is really hard. Oh yeah. Sometimes not, yeah. we are not trained psychologists. So do not <laughs> take any of this to the bank, please. Um, but it is things that I found more recently to be pretty helpful actually. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. So 
Wow. Well, I feel like my I'm going, we're going to take a hard, hard, yeah, right hard turn, turn right here. here. You ready for this? I'm like ready. this is going to be like <laughs> like intense. Okay. So um, this year I've been reading a lot more than normal, oddly enough, which is kind of kind of insane. But audiobooks for the win. If people wonder how I read so much when you're traveling, road trips. It makes road trips so good. I would say this one of the single best things I've discovered in the last few years is audiobooks at speed multiples. <laughs> so you, like people read audiobooks really, really, really slow. I tend to read really fast. So it's like put that audiobook on two X speed, baby. Let's go. And so and you you know, go on a road trip and and Trish and I love it. It's great. <laughs> so I have this insatiable curiosity, as we talked about in a recent episode, mm-hmm. the Mosaic of Knowledge. Um, there's a bunch of stuff. If we're looking at just books, here's a uh, a nice little sample. Um, you know, Dutch colonialism. Uh, that's that's really interesting. Mennonite missions, Baruch era politics, alchemy, Apollo rocket engineering. It's just so cool. Software design <laughs> for the Apollo rocket, like the rocket that sent men to the moon. So cool. Alexander the Great, dude. Talk about an absolute legend, but also an absolute messed up guy. <laughs> <laughs> Alexander the Great is. Got to t- got to be in the top five of all humans to fit those descriptions. Um, giant airships like the Hindenburg, for example, that's a whole thing, like a whole thing, and it is unreal. There's a new book came out on it called um, "His Royal Majesty's Airship." Yeah, hmm. about R101, the, the British airship. It's really, and I'm not going to ruin the ending because it's kind of wild. Mm-hmm. German U-boats during World War II. They mm-hmm. just found one of the last ones, and I list or the, I think the last lost loop U-boat. I forget. Um, which one was it? You, you, uh, you 38? Uh, man, I'm, uh, don't quote me on that. I'm gonna probably way off. I listened to a book on it. It's f- fabulous. So interesting. Also, like, How to Become a Millionaire. Um, there's a great book on that. Uh, we should maybe hit it. Is it point. called How to Become a Millionaire? No, it's called <laughs> Everyday Millionaires, actually. So, Dave Ramsey out in Nashville, which you've actually met him, I've right? Met like, him. you went Took out a there with him and everything. That's so cool. Um, yeah, the Dave Ramsey show, if you're, you know, needed some help with personal finance, they're like the best. Um, but they did the biggest survey of millionaires in America. And like ask them all these questions. They surveyed 10,000 of them and figured out like, what is it that made them millionaires? It's actually like super easy. Hmm. Go to college, get a really good mid-level job, not CEO, not bottom of the totem pole, good, like just solid with good options for, you know, stepping up the ladder and work at a very solid, reputable company doing, you know, something a little more specific, like, like real estate lawyer, you know, but not, not it, almost none of them were CEOs. You know, and the highest percentage, the top three in the top three was teachers, like college professors. Hmm. And you stick at that job for 30 years and you throw every penny you can into a Roth IRA and a matching 401k and bingo, you'll be a millionaire easily, easily. Mm. No problem. The problem is, um, you don't don't, have a life. I don't really want to do that, (laughs) (laughs) but, but that's actually like, if you love that kind of thing, then like, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I know lots of guys that are like, Hey, they, you know. Go teach at whatever university, love it, mm-hmm. and they're actually doing okay. You know, like um, anyways, yeah. not, not all. There's a lot of college professors that are way underpaid, and it's a crime. Um, the whole concept of essentialism, not minimalism, but essentialism. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting, and we'll look at the book here in a second. And then the foundations of modern science, like the philosophies of how science started. So here's an example. So if y'all are watching on YouTube, you'll actually see this. But if you're listening, too bad. Um, so like talking about personal finance, read uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad. Have mm-hmm. you read this? No, I haven't. Robert Kawasaki. He's, he definitely rubbed some feathers the wrong way with some of his theories on Monday. But <laughs> man, it's it's really good. It's actually, I, I figured the hype, you know, it's like, oh, whatever. This is kind of, but I had a good friend of mine say, you, you should read this. This is good stuff. So I read it and it is actually a good, you really, here, just take it. You should, you should read it. It's, it's really good. <laughs> My to read um, list is quite long. It'll be a couple um, months. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm really deep in, um, in uh, deep in the okay, so of course, as one does, you know, we go deep down the rabbit hole of you know the Dutch East Indies and Islam and colonialism and all of that coming together in this delightful book by uh, John Roth, um, Mennonite professor up in mm. Goshen College. We mm-hmm. interviewed him for yeah. about his respect to his mm-hmm. podcast. He sent me this, which is so cool. Thank you, Doctor Roth. And it's it's the story of the Mennonites in Indonesia and how that like ties in with anyway. I got way down the rabbit hole of like the Dutch East Indies Company, right? Mm. You've heard of that, right? Dutch East Indies. Uh, I've heard of it. I don't know what it is. It was one of like the one of the oldest um, stock investments, basically, of all oh. time. So it started in like the 1600s. But here's a really interesting thing. Okay, so that it was all tied in with like colonialism and some some pretty dark stuff, but. So the Dutch East Indies companies, which we've all heard of, as okay. Indonesia. Mm-hmm. So, there was a Dutch West Indies company. Okay. So East, if you're in the Netherlands right. and you go East, Indonesia, where do you go if you go West? Not sure. 
Well, I mean, what's west of Netherlands? Like, Don't dude, know. there's only one option, dude. America. Yes, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yes. So there was a Dutch West Indies company, which I did not know, and they do 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 do. They're wanting to route it. Hey, here's this really nice river, and hey, here's this cool island, and it's like perfect for shipping. And the Indians, Native Americans, sorry, are really kind, and they're going to sell us this island for like a string of beads, and it's awesome. And the name of this island is Manhattan, and that's how we got New York City. I see. Isn't that like what? Du- Never knew that. So Dutch West Indies. So now I've been studying about the Dutch West, you know, West Indies, and then they went out of business. But, oh man! You know, here we have New York City to thank for these guys. Yeah, but, no kidding. Um, <laughs> so uh, let's see. Oh, and then this is probably the um, the goodness. finest accomplishment over the last years. This. Oh my goodness! That's actually like legit. Heavy. What is that total? Probably so like three thousand pages. It's almost three thousand pages goodness. right here um, on Baruch era Europe. Um, but particularly the foundations of the beginnings of what we would now call modern science. So like when the Royal Society in England started, for example. Um, so it follows the story of Sir Isaac Newton and his theories of science, but, but it's wild. Sir Isaac Newton, the genius, amazing scientist that we all look up to, if he would be here today, we would say he's a quack job because he thought <laughs> alchemy, like he was like alchemy all the way. And he did a little bit of science on the side, but he was all into alchemy and alchemy is going to explain the world. And if we can just figure out this alchemy thing, well, we can make unlimited gold and it's going to be awesome. Like alchemy being, you can take a cheap rock and turn it into gold. Basically, you can change the substance, the core of something because they didn't understand the basics of like <laughs> DNA and, and molecules and atoms. They didn't know about this stuff. Wow. <laughs> so this is 3000 pages telling that story and the founding of um, the Royal Society in England and yeah, the history nice. of London. And I mean, it... It, Ugh, it was I'm getting ins- tired just thinking. It was this. so good. It was so good at how that like interface. And then, and then basically the whole series is about Sir Isaac Newton and his just fascination with alchemy to the point of like, it actually ruined his career because he, he yeah. could have been way further along as a scientist. Mm. He would have just stayed as a university professor at Cambridge. Like he was supposed to. Um, <laughs> it's about that and his theory versus Johann Leibniz. I think is how you mm. say it. Uh, the German philosopher uh, at the same time. These guys only met twice in life, but they had diametrically opposed perspectives on how the universe works. Hmm. And instead of those two scientists working together and actually helping us understand the world, they spent like the last two decades of their lives fighting each other and writing papers about why the other guy was an idiot. And it's just like, it shows the vanity of humanity (laughs) of like, and both of them were wrong. Like that's what's so crazy. Like, (laughs) They had these fundamental, basically it came down to one side said, everything is preordained by God. So like, Mm -hmm. if you could understand all the laws, you could predict everything. The other side says, oh, there's actually free will. Like we actually can't do that. Mm -hmm. And they could, they could never, and their whole worldviews of science were completely opposed to each other. Mm -hmm. And so they, they got like Kings involved and Queens and like, they're trying to solve this thing because it's this big deal. Anyways. So that's kind of showing where I've been the last, uh, six months it's been pretty pretty awesome now the real question is why does any of this stuff matter right and that's what's really important so oddly enough so a lot of those conversations on like free will and how we got here and how science got here is Mm -hmm. a really big deal actually like Mm. we need to understand that we need to care about that because it dramatically influences our worldview even like a lot of christian theology around concepts of predestination or free Mm. will come back to this very same concept Interesting. Just in different ways. Because both these guys were Christians too. And one was a predestinationist and the other one wasn't. Hmm. And it influenced everything and how they viewed the world. Everything. It determines like, do you believe in fatalism? Like everything is just what it is, like Islam teaches? Or do you say, I actually have choice and I have free will and autonomy? You know, which is what the American Western mindset would say. It's just, you start understanding Hmm. like, oh, wait a second. This is actually really important to understand. And then usually I'm like reading something like this to like prepare for a class I'm teaching or something, hence the Dutch East Indies and then the Dutch West Indies. And then, oh my goodness, it started getting all kinds of fun. My point being, you know, all this stuff, some of it is random. Some of it's just me just going for what I find curious. But mm. at the same time, I actually, I don't think I can overemphasize how important it is to actually understand that. Or like reading about Alexander the Great, you know, we wouldn't be speaking this language probably if it wasn't for him Hmm, you know we like our whole worldview of how we think about information how we think about the human experience and politics and things radically different because of alexander the great 
and we can't get into all those details because it'd become a long podcast, but how important someone like that is to the, to the human story. Yeah. And I think, uh, I think that's important to know. Um, I, 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 I actually really believe that. Mm. Um, and so maybe it is kind of random. Maybe it's just kind of whatever, you know, <laughs> and it is a kind of, Kind but of. I actually really believe it. Um, and then it ends up influencing like classes I'll teach and be like, uh, which especially the Alexander the Great one, actually, because I'm teaching a course probably later on this year on, on some of this stuff. Um, so hmm. anyways, that's, that's a pretty good rundown. Isn't it a rundown? I mean, that was just, that was a tiny, tiny slice, but you know, we didn't yeah. even get into uh, Apollo rocket engines and software engineering. I haven't read even like nearly that much. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's been I, a rough year. <laughs> yeah, like wow, how they designed software back in the day for rockets in the like, hmm. and they how did they? Oh my goodness, it's so wild. There's there's a video you should watch on it. It's, it's just <laughs> it's just so interesting. And even something like that, it's like okay, come on, man, that's just random. That's just you, you know. And yeah, I find this stuff fascinating. But at the same time, it's like actually understanding the foundations of how computers got to where they are now yeah, actually kind of matters because yeah. suddenly conversations now that we're having about artificial intelligence and machine learning and augmented reality, it's like mm -hmm. really important to understand the foundations of where those things came from. So anyways, here I am, I'm rambling, but uh, it's been a good year so far for learning lots of really random things. And I guess if there's a takeaway, um, it would be, don't be like Sir Isaac Newton who wasted most of his life doing alchemy and fighting <laughs> and fighting everybody who didn't agree with him. Um, but even that, even on the side, he did manage to figure out the laws of gravity and bank calculus, determine the properties of light and a whole just bunch of side. other stuff, just on the side, you know? Um, <laughs> uh, but no, don't, don't be like that. Okay. That's the, that's the one takeaway. Uh, anyways. All right. So that's, that's it. That's all I got. It's been a fun nice. one. So. Yeah. The other thing is I was thinking it'd be cool um, at some point if we could do like little video clips, like, like highlights of yeah. our podcast so that might be another reason to subscribe uh to our our youtube i don't know exactly how that's going to work it's going to kind of depend on whether or not uh we can hire someone to do that or if one of us has time dude just get ai to do it it'll just do everything for you back yeah. to the foundations of computing you know so yeah it just it knows what's most important obviously it does. out of a 30 minute episode <laughs> exactly <laughs> anyways <laughs> so yeah anyway thanks for listening and uh if you're curious how we organize all of our book notes and our virtual mm. bookshelves and stuff we actually use notion for that if you want i don't know if reagan has this available or not yet but on my website i have a uh, notion template available for free if you want it you can go in there and download it and there's some examples of some of the books that i've read and the book notes that are in them so you can see how i categorize them um, and how i record all those um so yeah it's this whole big poof, database it's pretty awesome that is, um yeah. so if you want that feel free to check that out and follow us on youtube at Austin Truck and Reagan Truck mm -hmm. and our websites, austintruck.com, reagantruck.com, reagantruck.com. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, and we will see you in the next one.